Hi, YouTube friends. I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead, and I'm an herbalist and aromatherapist. And today we're going to talk about a very, very famous uh, concoction that herbalists love to make everywhere, and it's called fire cider. So fire cider is a really famous uh, concoction that all herbalists everywhere love to make, and it's growing more and more mainstream every year. And there's a reason for that. It works. So there are some basic ingredients that fire ciders of all kinds generally have in their recipes. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my basic recipe, which contains about six basic ingredients. And then we're going to talk about uh, other ingredients that you can add. And herbalists love to play with uh, elixirs and concoctions like these and make up their own recipes. And the thing is, is that depending on what you're adding to your fire cider, you're going to make it more and more powerful. So fire cider is a vinegar-based herbal infusion that is excellent for boosting your immune system, helping your, to support your body in a number of different ways, keeping you well, and it just tastes really good. Many people just love it because it tastes fabulous. It's fun to drink every day, and there's fun things you can do with it. So I want to show you just really fast this right here is a fire cider that I made a few months ago, and look how dark it is. Most fire ciders are going to be kind of a golden brown. This one happens to have elderberry in it, and it tastes amazing. So I just wanted to show you this to let you know that you can add other things. It will change up the appearance of it, but it's just a wonderful, wonderful drink. Okay, so first of all, I would say the base ingredient in most fire ciders is raw apple cider vinegar. So vinegars have a number of different functions. They can help with fungal infections. They're great for hair rinses, although I wouldn't use fire cider as a hair rinse. <laughs> you don't wanna be smelling like garlic. If they're, vinegar is helpful for sunburns, post-workout drinks. They're excellent as a hangover remedy, digestion, Vinegar helps thin the mucus in, in your um, sinuses and therefore helps with congestion and it's antibacterial. Um, e. coli is actually one of the bacteria that vinegar has been shown to kill and it helps support a healthy blood sugar level. So you can see that vinegar is just amazing in and of itself, even without adding the other ingredients. So herbalists like to create things with different solvents. And in this case, vinegar is the solvent. It is the base that the herbs are going to go into to infuse. And this is called an acetum in usual herbal language. Okay, so vinegar is the base. I'm gonna set it over here and I'll use it when I'm ready. Next up in this recipe is we've got um, onion. So I've got two different onions here. I'm actually going to use the red onion and I'm, and I'm going to tell you why, but you could use white, you could use a yellow onion, but onions, uh, red onions have um, higher levels of carotenoids and so there's greater antioxidant activity in a red onion. So I'm going to set the white onion aside for a moment. You could add uh, a half a cup of onion, that's what I have for my recipe, or you can add more if you like. So you can really be flexible with this recipe. So onions support heart health, they're great for that. There are over 17 antioxidant compounds in, uh, in onions. And what that means is that antioxidants help the anti-aging process. They kill free radicals in the body that cause oxidation and inflammation. So eating onions every day is a really good idea. Onions might have anti-cancer properties. There's studies being done on that now. And onions also do help with, with blood sugar levels when uh, eaten consistently. Eaten daily, onions can help protect and strengthen bones, and also uh, onions happen to be somewhat antibacterial too. So what you want to use is about a half of a cup of onion, and what I'm going to be putting this in is a quart size mason jar with a white, with a wide mouth. That's the kind I like to use for my fire cider. If I come across a recipe that I adore, then I might make a half a gallon with this, and you can buy half gallon mason jars. They're easy to find. And often you'll see, I'll have several different fire ciders going on my countertop that uh, 
just because I like the different recipes, but I know some herbalists who will make different fire ciders specifically for different members of the family, and that's always fun too. But again, this is my basic recipe I'm sharing with you, and you are welcome to be flexible with it and share it with others. I'm in my new studio uh, down in town right now, and I don't have all my best utensils here yet. I'm going to have to get some, some more so that I can be a better functioning herbalist here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put these slices right into my mason jar. Here it is right here. I think one of the neatest things about being an herbalist is being able to use actual foods uh, that have medicinal properties as part of what we do. It's pretty amazing. So here we go. I've probably got about a cup of, of onion in this mason jar. And that's about a half, a little bit over a half of an onion. All right, so next up we have garlic. So I have some cloves here. These come, I like to store my cloves in white vinegar in the refrigerator. So that's what these are coming from. You can just use fresh garlic cloves. You can also use minced garlic from uh, Costco if you like that. And I am just going to put these in whole. You can crush them, you can mince them, you can chop them, you can do what you like with them. And I'm also adding more than I need to. I'm probably adding about eight or nine garlic cloves here. My recipe calls for about five or six. And again, I am not chopping these right now. Okay, so garlic is really wonderful for helping to prevent the common cold. When I say fire cider boosts your immune system, it truly does, and it's because of the ingredients in it. Garlic is one of those ingredients. It helps reduce blood pressure. In fact, I just did a video recently on how I uh, naturally manage my own high blood pressure personally for myself. Garlic is one of the ingredients, and I will link to that right above so that you can see that. Garlic also supports healthy cholesterol levels, and it also contains compounds that some researchers have found help to decrease Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's really a wonderful herb for brain and, and cognition, too. Garlic has been found to aid in longevity. So longevity studies have shown that garlic might actually help us live a little bit longer, at least. Uh, garlic is wonderful for potentially helping to detox heavy metals out of our system. And then um, on top of that, garlic helps to maintain healthy bones. Here we are with our ingredients so far. Alrighty, let's move ahead and we're going to get to the ginger. Now ginger is amazing. It's one of my favorite herbs. <laughs> I just love it. We eat a lot of ginger. You want about a quarter to a half of cup of ginger, but ginger helps with nausea, motion sickness. Uh, it might help actually with weight loss and getting a better BMI reading or body mass index reading. It's really nice for joint health. In fact, the essential oil is, if I'm making a formulation for a person with joint aches and pains, I almost 100% of the time will include ginger essential oil in it because it is, it's got an affinity for the joints and the, the actual plant does as well. It helps with um, indigestion, it's anti-diabetic, it reduces menstrual cramps. So even just drinking some ginger tea or if you have the essential oil, I'm not using essential oil with fire, fire cider here of course, just kind of generally telling you what ginger can be good for. You can dilute it in some carrier oil and rub it on your abdomen and it's really, really helpful for that. Ginger is also helpful for healthy cholesterol levels, brain health as well, and it can fight gum disease. So gingers are amazing. What I'm going to do with this ginger is, and I just want to mention here, you can grate your ginger if you want to, or you can just chop it up. And I am just going to go ahead and chop it into little nickel-sized pieces. Next, I'm going to manage my ginger. All right, so you can see that beautiful ginger, little nickel-sized pieces. It smells so amazing, and I'm going to go ahead and cut up a bit more here. Love my ginger. Some people like to peel their ginger. I don't. I personally love the extra uh, nutrients and roughage that's found in peelings, so I generally don't peel anything. <laughs> And maybe there's a little laziness in there too. I do wash my vegetables very, very well though. So I just will say that. All right, there's my ginger. Next up, 
we've got horseradish. Horseradish, and this grows in my garden. I love digging it up. It's, it's really an amazing root uh, and a beautiful plant. By the way, if you're growing uh, horseradish, you definitely want to plant it away from everything else because it will take over. Horseradish is rather tough. So I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, start cutting here. Horseradish has some proven anti-cancer qualities. It's because it contains a chemical called uh, glucosinolates. And those glucosinolates actually protect the plant in the natural environment from toxins. And so scientists theorize it does the same thing in our bodies. They're not really sure for sure, but horseradish is one of the herbs that might be very helpful for dealing with cancers and things like that. It's very rich in antioxidants. Again, your antioxidants are those things that cause oxidation in the body, cause aging and inflammation. So you definitely want antioxidants in your diet. It's just a really good thing to have in your diet. Horseradish protects against harmful bacteria as well, both in the gut and uh, in other places too. Horseradish is one of those plants that when you breathe it in, you've, you may have already done this before, you breathe it in and it immediately decongests your nose, right? It thins the mucus in your sinuses. It's very, very helpful if you have a cough um, or other bronchial issues as well. So I just really love horseradish for a number of things. It's also helpful for digestion and it is anti-inflammatory. It does relieve pain. So horseradish is quite amazing. And I'm cutting the horseradish into little rounds, which I'm gonna go ahead and cut in half because they're a little bit large. So I'm just gonna take this stack, cut those in half, put, them, put this in there. Same thing with these. I really love the smell of horseradish. If you like prime beef and all that good stuff, or prime rib sandwiches, you've probably had horseradish on the side. Some people love it, some people don't. Personally, I like it. <laughs> all righty. Next up, we've got cayenne peppers. These are from our garden a couple of years ago. These are dried, and I grow a lot of cayenne every single year. This is another herb that I really just love. It's a food herb, and it's so useful. So cayenne, and these are already uh, dried, and so I'm just going to kind of crumble them in here. But cayenne is an amazing pain reliever. The capsaicin that it contains, it's a chemical, really goes to work on inflammation. It warms your body. It supports your uh, a healthy cardiovascular system. It lowers blood sugar too. So if you use it as part of your diet, it's really helpful. It is loaded with nutrients. So um, if you want a very high nutrient dense vegetable, then cayenne pepper is your friend, okay? It's loaded with uh, flavonoids, vitamin C, carotenoids. They're just so wonderful for you. It strongly supports the cardiovascular system, which I just mentioned, but it's really good for it. It's something I actually take every single day to support my own, and I just love cayenne peppers. So here's the basic ingredients for my recipe for fire cider. Again, if you wanted to play around, I put elderberry in this one. You could do some different things. I am going to add a few different items in this uh, fire cider just because I like to. <laughs> so here is some rosemary. I took this from a plant that is growing in my living room right now because we're in the dead of winter here. And uh, I have to bring my rosemary in uh, for the winter and I just, Use it all winter long, it does really well. I do have an article on my website about how to grow rosemary inside. Uh, during the winter months, there's a few things you must do differently. And boy, smells so good, so, so good. <laughs> all righty, let me get that rosemary in there, yummy. Next up, I've got some turmeric here and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, Chop this, chop a little bit of this into little pieces. So you can see, I'm really not measuring. When you look at my directions, I do have measurements. 
but really they're just a suggestion <laughs> for your fire cider. You can be as loosey goosey as you want with this. And, and I, again, just love this. So turmeric's very, very anti-inflammatory. It's a really good idea if you use turmeric to add black pepper to it too. Um, since I'm down in my studio office, I do not have black pepper with me, but that's one thing I'm going to be adding to this. The reason you want to use turmeric with black pepper is because there is a chemical in turmeric called curcumin that causes it to have the anti-inflammatory benefits. And the problem is, is it's not very bioavailable in our body, which means our body has a hard time uptaking it. So if you add a little bit of black pepper, it contains a compound called piperine, and the piperine actually helps that curcumin become more available in the body. So it just helps our body absorb it better. So just a little tidbit on that. I'm also going to add a little bit of jalapeno pepper. So jalapenos and cayennes are very similar in that they both contain capsaicin, but uh, jalapenos don't contain as much. Personally, I love the flavor of jalapeno peppers, and I also like the pretty green color. So I'm just seeing little green things floating around in here. <laughs> it's just kind of nice. And there was one other herb I wanted to add, and that is some citrus slices. The problem is, is that I don't have any more room in my jar. <laughs> I should have planned for this better, right? Um, maybe I can get a couple slices in there. Let's just see here. So these are just little mandarin oranges, but you could use lemon slices. You could use orange slices. You could use lime slices. So orange slices, uh, and, and, and all the citruses have a ton of vitamin C. So we all know vitamin C is a really nice immune booster. The other thing about the citruses is that they, if you use the peel, you're going to get a lot of bitters. And the bitters are very, very helpful for your digestive system. So I think I'm just going to try to tuck some of these little darlings right down the side here. Let's see how that goes. Mm -mm -mm. Lovely. Put one over here. This is fun. You know, when, when you start making your little fire cider mixtures, you're, you're just going to have so much fun with them. So I'm just going to add a couple of citrus here. All right, so now I am ready for the next step. All right, so here we go with the final, or almost final step, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my raw apple cider vinegar. Uh, you can get fancy and use Bragg's if you want. I love Bragg's. Uh, this is simply the raw vinegar from Costco. I feel like it's really perfect for fire cider. I like to leave a little space at the top so that when I shake it and give it a good shake, there's a little bit of movement. I did pack this jar pretty well, as you can see. Isn't that gorgeous though? Just gorgeous. And it's just so fun to do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, put my plastic lid on. I'm gonna stress the fact that you wanna use a plastic lid because a metal lid is not good with vinegar because the vinegar corrodes the metal. I'm just gonna give this a good shake. Make sure everything's all good and mixed up in there. And now I'm actually gonna pour a little bit more in because my herbs have separated a little and some of them are above the surface. So I just wanna talk really fast about what happens if you overstuff a jar <laughs> full of your herbs and your solvent, which is sometimes easy to do. Normally, tincture making is different than, than making a fire cider, but usually you're not packing the jar like this. It is perfectly fine to go and split your jars. If you need to, you can do two jars. That is my fire cider. Next step on this is I'm going to let this sit and shake it occasionally for about four to six weeks. And this is going to become this gorgeous brown color. Again, this uh, version here is purple and very, very lovely. There's a little sediment on the bottom, but it's very dark because of the elderberry. But here we go with this. This is gonna become brown. And that's my fire cider. When you're ready for it, all you do is you strain off the vinegar or the, you know, the liquid, and you bottle it up, and you take about a tablespoon at a time in some water is what most people do. They'll take about a half a cup of water to a cup of water, 
put a tablespoon in there and drink it down. I know some people who like to do uh, fire cider shots <laughs> and they'll get a shot glass and they'll just drink it straight. So this is very flexible. It's very much up to you how you want to take it. Remember, these are all food herbs. So therefore, they're quite safe. Really, this is one of the best tonic drinks you can make for yourself at any time of the year. We're heading into right now uh, springtime. We're going to start getting those spring colds coming up. So if you've got fire cider ready to go, you're in good shape. All of these herbs in here, with the exception of the citrus, although I do grow lemons too, and I'm in North Idaho, but you can grow all of these right in your garden and grow your own fire cider. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this little quick tutorial on fire cider. I love this stuff. And I'm gonna go take a shot of my elderberry fire cider right now. Just really enjoy watching this one infuse over the next uh, few weeks. So let me know if you have questions in the comments below. Please subscribe, share this with a friend. I would love to have you join my newsletter list. There's amazing content every single week. I give you free tips and teach herbalism all the time. It's my passion. All right, I'll see you later. I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead. It's been a pleasure talking with you.